This large bell crater was manufactured shortly after the middle of the 5th century BC in Athens and served as a mixing vessel for wine and water at the symposium. At first glance, it seems as if women and men, common Athenian citizens, are talking to each other on both sides. However, on a close inspection, one can see that the male figures are by no means normal men, but rather satyrs, and that one of the women is holding a thirsty staff, which is the unmistakable sign for the god Dionysus and his entourage. Consequently, the females are menads, the Dionysian counterpart to the satyrs. Let us shortly take a look at the other piece from the auction, a black figure crater from neighboring Eboia that dates just half a century earlier. On the back, two couples of satyrs and menads can be easily recognized. Dancing wildly, the naked satyrs twine and around the menads, which are trying to evade the satyr's lustful grasp. This unbridled and innocent behavior is what one would normally expect from a depiction of the retinue of wine and ecstasy god, as well as this is what we normally see on numerous similar vessels. It is much different on this piece, isn't it? The well-dressed menads standing in an elegant posture in a quiet conversation with the satyrs. One of the satyrs fully matches his partner, dressed in a long coat, leaning calmly on his walking stick, a perfectly formed posture honorable to any Attic citizen of the time. The second one appears naked, although a closer look reveals the spirit of gorgeous conventions of the time as his limb is fibrillated, that is, tied up. So we ask ourselves, what is the reason behind such an unusual depiction? Let us for a moment think about Athens in the middle of 5th century BC. As the greatest winner of Persian wars, she completed the development towards absolute democracy under the leadership of Pericles, at the same time gaining unrestricted power within the alliance and Attic the Lion League that altogether brought a significant political relaxation. The visible consequence of these developments is a previously undreamt of upturn in the arts. Today we call this age the High Classical Period, main symbol of it being one of the most well-known buildings in the whole mankind history, the Parthenon. But the beautiful appearance has its price. The complete democracy created a strong arm with which the state regulated and controlled everything down to the most private concerns of the Attic citizenship. Not even base depictions avoided these restrictions. So coming back to our marvelous piece, now we understand that it shows us how the state of Athens was trying to come to terms with the cult of Dionysus, the cult of somewhat oriental spirit and wild rites that those at power disliked already for a long time. It is now tamed, pacified, and forced into the course of, of common gorgeous conventions. In this regard, these images represent both the high point of Athens' democracy as well as its dark side.